Hello everyone. Happy Holy Week and it's Wednesday. We're in the middle of the week and I'm sending you a message today for you to look at and we're going to talk a little bit about Holy Week because we're, we're, we're in the middle of it and I hope that many of you got to participate today in the Oswald Mass this morning. It felt really good to listen to Mass together and know that other people were there listening with me and watching Father, Father Joe present the Mass. Um, like we do every time we meet, and we're going to start with our prayers. Are you ready? Just everybody put your holy hand. Let's say our prayers. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you all my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day. For all the intentions of your sacred heart, in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world, to make up for my sins, for the needs of all those to whom we pray, for the unity of all Christians, and especially for the intentions of our Holy Father, the Pope. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, we love you. Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray for us. St. John Newman, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now take your black flag, put your hand on your heart, and we're going to say our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And our student mission statement is to serve God with loving hearts, joyfully embrace our Catholic faith, and nurture individual and academic excellence. And as we always say, have a great day and go Mustangs! So we're going to, um, okay, let me see that flag, but I want to just see all my friends. So I talked to you on Monday about Palm Sunday. I showed you my palms from last year, but I didn't have my books. And this is a little late today. I had to go to school today and look for some things. And it's hard to find stuff when everything's sort of just all there and you're not. So I went and found, I brought a bunch of books home for after Easter so that we can do some stories. And um, I did get a story about Palm Sunday. And I know you probably have heard some, but we'll talk about it a little bit today. But since we're in Holy Week, I want to get our Lenten path, and you can see that we now, that's better, are in Holy Week. That was Palm Sunday, that was Sunday, and then I talked to you on Monday. So we need Tuesday and Wednesday, we need to color in two more squares. And it's so amazing how we are just about at Easter Sunday. Just about there, we're on, on Wednesday. And starting tomorrow, People like to think, you know, call it Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday, along with Easter Sunday. So we are super close. You can see that this is Wednesday. Here's Holy Thursday. It says Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. So super exciting. Um, Jesus is going to die and be resurrected on the cross, which is good for us. We're going to talk about that a little. But um, I do want to sing our Lent song because you probably won't sing it much after this week. And um, we have plenty of other singing to do, but I don't want to forget the Lent songs. Everybody sing with me. You know it. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we are meant to repent. Forty days of sacrifice, being super extra nice. This is Lent. This is Lent. So that's a great way to remember to be super extra nice. Prayer. Add some extra prayer. Maybe you watch Mass today. We don't usually go to Mass on Wednesdays. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Almsgiving for you is giving of yourself, being helpful. So Lent is almost finished. We're almost done talking about it. But like I said, Sunday was a very special Mass, and it was Palm Sunday. So I want to read you a story that's in one of my children's Bibles. This one is my picture Bible storybook that I have, and it has the story of Palm Sunday in it. So I'm going to try to read it. I'll try to hold it this way and show you the pictures of Palm Sunday. So you can see what kind of happened. It's got a lot of words, but there are some pictures. This is where it starts, and it goes this way. So I'll start. I'm going to move my... That would be better if I move it over a little bit there. So it's called the Grand Entry. Jesus left the city and walked to a large green hill called the Mount of Olives. 
go to the, and he said, go down to the village on the road, he told his disciples, and you will see a young donkey tied there. Untie the rope and bring it back to me. The disciples walked down the road and they found the donkey, just like Jesus said. And they took their cloaks off and covered the donkey's back. And then they led the animal to Jesus. So there is the donkey. They're untying him. They're going to put their cloaks, which are blankets, on the back. They don't have a saddle, but it's something to sit on. So this donkey is going to um, be kind of like uh, transportation for Jesus. So now we're on this page. Jesus climbed on the donkey's back, and it carried him carefully down the hill to Jerusalem. Even at that distance, he could see the crowd gathering along the road and at the city gate. Look, everyone, the king is coming, a man called. I can see him now. Then he took off his cloak and spread it on the road. Other men did the same, and women gathered palm branches from a palm tree and laid them on the road, too. So kind of like putting a red carpet down for people who are famous. They were laying their cloaks and their palm leaves on the road so that Jesus had a nice path to walk on. Maybe it was muddy. They made it nicer for him. And it says we're on this page. Some of the people ran ahead of Jesus, and they led him to the city. Many walked behind, shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus and the donkey passed through the gates, and the entire city was excited. People who didn't know asked, Who is this man that everyone follows? The others who did know replied, Haven't you heard? It's Jesus, of course, the greatest prophet who ever lived. So you can see that page where he's coming through the city on the donkey's back. And everybody's excited. So this was an important day because everybody's learning about him and what he has to say about God. And they were excited. It was like a big parade almost. So that's where the palm leaves came from. And they laid them on the ground. So And, and some people waved them sort of like pom-poms. So um, that is the story of Palm Sunday. So um, I wanted to talk about that a little bit because that's where we started Holy Week. And then we've had Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, and uh, there are some things we can do during Holy Week today. I'm going to mention in my blooms that maybe you can uh, watch the Stations of the Cross. I think that you can see it tomorrow. You can see it all the rest of this week. And that's something you would have seen in school because we do uh, Stations of the Cross. The seventh graders do a shadow play. And um, I want you to be able to see that. And you can talk about it with your families. So also because we are talking about Easter, I want to sing Jesus Loves Me, because we did that during our sing-along one, but it's a good um, song about God that we know, and a good reminder, and you know it, just to get you singing about God a little bit, because we have a lot of songs that we know, and haven't had a chance to do a lot of singing. So let's sing Jesus Loves Me in honor of Holy Week and Easter, so you know it, sing with me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He will stay close beside me all the way. If I love him when I die. He will take me home on high. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me. He who died heaven's gates to open wide. He will wash away my sins. Let the little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. So there's that one verse that says, Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gates to open wide. Well, when he was resurrected, he opened the gates of heaven to all of us. So that's why, why he had to die on the cross, because it sounds like a really sad story. Why? 
Well, he opened the gates of heaven for us so that that's where we get to go. When we die, we get to go to heaven. So that is a cool thing. I hope you are all working on your um, your Grandparents' Day project. Make those phone calls. Ask the questions. Draw some pictures. You, they're, they're due whenever you're done with them, so don't worry about it. But work on them. You, you can use this paper or just write things down. We want to know about what toys and games and stories your grandparents liked when they were your age or when they were a child. Also, try to take some pictures, Ooh, my flat Francis was upside down, uh, of your fr flat Francis doing something special during Holy Week. It can be anything that you're doing. There has been some pretty special Easter type of shows on television that you might be able to watch. Some of them aren't really for pre-K, but maybe you're seeing some things on TV that have to do with church. Maybe you're watching Father Joe say Mass, and your flat Francis can be with you. So try to take some pictures of you, flat, flat Francis. And lastly, we are doing the virtual Easter egg hunt. You don't have to. I have colored my eggs. I did this one. I tried to use the pattern a little bit. Um, and then I did, I didn't do all three of them. I just didn't have time. I did this one because I like polka dots. So, and I used to try to use a different color on every dot and colored it all. And these are going to go in my window so that if somebody wants to do a virtual Easter egg hunt, they have two Easter eggs to see at my house. I'll put one in each window. So keep doing those things. Um, also, uh, I think, let me make sure how much time I have. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I think I want to read to you some of the other stories that we have about Jesus coming up. I don't, you're not going to get a video from me on Good Friday. You're gonna, we're going to be kind of quiet on Friday and Monday because those are holidays. Good Friday is a holiday, Easter Monday. So I'm going to read you a little story about the Last Supper. And that is um, kind of reminds us of the Mass, because that's where the, our Mass comes from. And the story I have is out of my other children's Bible. This one's called My Favorite Bible Stories. And it has the story of the Last Supper. And that happens on uh, Good Friday. Let me find it. 240. Okay. 240. I got a fun page. Almost there. Near the end of the book. Okay. All right. This is called the Last Supper, and this is kind of what happens. This is where the resurrection and the, cruci the crucifixion and resurrection kind of begin. So I'm going to hold it this way. Make sure you can see it. it starts over here. Judas, one of Jesus's friends, he's one of his disciples, had a bad idea. He knew that the leaders were angry with Jesus. He knew they wanted to catch Jesus. Now Judas wanted money more than anything. So he told the leaders that he would show them where Jesus was if they would pay him some money. They paid him with 30 pieces of silver. So he is, um, he needed money here, that's Judas. And that's the church leaders giving him the 30 pieces of silver. So. One night, Jesus and his friends were eating supper together. Jesus said, one of you is planning to do something bad to me. Who is it? asked John. So they're all sitting there with Jesus. Jesus said, this is Jesus in the purple. Jesus says, it is the one I give bread to. And then he gave a piece of bread to Judas. Go on, Jesus told him, do what you are planning to do. Jesus got up and left. Only Judas and Jesus knew what Judas' bad idea was. So you can see the Last Supper, and they have bread and wine, kind of like we have in church at Mass. Jesus gave thanks and broke some bread. He shared it with his friends. Next, he took a cup of wine and gave thanks. He shared this with his friends, too. Whenever you eat the bread and drink the wine, remember me, he said. Then Jesus said, I will not be with you much longer. I have to leave. But do not worry. Do not be afraid. I will come back. You are my friends. Love each other as I love you. And that is the end of the Last Supper story. And that happens on Good Friday. But like I said, I won't probably make a video on, fr on Friday because it is a holiday. And you'll be with your families doing hopefully some Easter things. 
some Good Friday kinds of things. All right, so um, I am glad we saw you at the All School Mass. I think tomorrow I'm going to encourage you to do the Stations of the Cross. I'll send that in my balloons today and keep working on your projects. And I have a bunch of stories from school, and I'll start reading some of our books and doing some more of our songs when we get through Easter. So I think we're going to have a little more time where we get to do some things at home. But it's great to see you. It's great to talk to you. I hope you enjoy these videos and um, have a great Wednesday and the rest of the Holy Week. I miss you very much and I love you and I keep thinking about all of you uh, this Easter season. See you later.